Krishna Om Vishnu Pai Paramahamsa Parivra Jagatra Jasta Tadasati Shishima Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada Gita Jai Guru Vaishnava Gita Jai Namacharya Jagadasa Guru Gita Jai Prems and Hosi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Vaidya Gadara Shivasari Gopaka Tani Gita Jai Shishi Radha Krishna Prabhupada Gita Shabhu Radha Kum Giri Govara Gita Jai Vrindavan Gita Jai Navadi Gita Jai Maya Gita Jai Javanath Puri Nila Chodadam Ki Jai Jai Javanath Aladev Supadamarani Ki Jai Jai Sri Gauri Thai Ki Jai Jai Sri Radha Amadam Ki Jai Jai Dimensional Book Distribution Ki Jai Jai Sri Radha Piyata Mahalsa Ki Jai 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 Glory to the Assembled Lord All Glory to the Assembled Lord All Glory to the Assembled Lord All Glory to Sri Guru Sri Guru Hare So Vishnu Vidal who asked me to speak on Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, I'm sorry, chapter 4, text 2. Chapter 4, text 2. It's a very prominent verse in uh, giving the foundational understanding of our culture and philosophy. <clears throat> so we're going to read from this verse. Some of you may know it, so I'll, I'll chant it. If someone wants to repeat it, that'll be fine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya.
Mam Raja Srayo Bidu Mam Raja Srayo Bidu Sakale Nahamata Sakale Nahamata Yoge Nastaha Parantapa Yoge Nastaha Parantapa Word for word Evam thus Parampara by reciprocal succession Pratam receive Imam this science Raja Raja Vishaya, the saintly kings, Vidu, understood, sought that knowledge, Kalenia, Kalena, in the course of time, Iha, in this world, Mahata, great, Yoga, the signs of one's relationship with the Supreme, Nashta, scattered, Parantapa. The supreme science was thus received through the chain of the cyclic succession. And the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken. And therefore, the science as it is appears to be lost. Fourth. It is clearly stated that the Gita was especially meant for the saintly kings because they were to execute its purpose in ruling over it the citizens. Certainly Bhagavad Gita was never meant for the demonic persons who would dissipate, dissipate its value for one's, for no one's benefit and who would devise all types of interpretations according to personal whims. As soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of the unscrupulous commentators, there arose the need to re-establish the cyclic succession. 5,000 years ago, it was detected by the Lord himself that the cyclic succession was broken. And therefore, he declared that the purpose of the Gita appeared to be lost. In the same way, at the present moment, also, there are so many editions of the Gita, especially in English. But, all, but almost all of them do not except the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, although they make the good business on the words of Sri Krishna. This spirit, of, this spirit is demonic, because demons do not believe in God, but simply enjoy the property of the Supreme. Since there is a great need of an edition of the Gita in English, as it is received by the Parambara, the Siphic Succession system, an attempt is made herewith to fulfill this great want. Bhagavad Gita, accepted as it is, is a great boon to humanity. But if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculations, it is simply a waste of time. So I was looking this morning trying to find uh, a definition of disciplic succession in you know Google. We we look in Google. But the only things that came up on Google were related to Krishna consciousness and the Goya Vaishnava culture. Those two words don't show up, disciplic succession, from what I saw in any other place. So we know that is parampara means disciplic succession. So the disciplic succession in our line, not to say just our movement, because we have the Hare Krishna movement, but the disciplic succession is much bigger than that. It begins with Krishna, and Krishna gives the knowledge intact, unadulterated, because it's coming from the Lord, and everything the Lord says is 100% pure and correct. Everything we say, if we follow the Lord, can be correct, but generally speaking, it's adulterated with so many speculations and ideas, even if we're trying to understand Krishna consciousness. So Krishna gave it to Brahma, Tene Brahma Riddhaya Harikabhiya. He spoke in his heart. He gave him this knowledge. Because the Lord is in, he's in everyone's heart. 
He's in everyone's heart, and he's giving us the understanding, giving us knowledge, guiding us through our intelligence, uh, remembrance, forgetfulness, knowledge, everything comes from him. So he gave this Vedic knowledge, and Prabhupada describes Veda means knowledge. There's so many departments of knowledge. In, in the Vedic philosophy, you find uh, knowledge about warfare, building things, health, everything is there. You can find it all in the Vedas. But then knowledge is supposed to come unadulterated down to the human society. So Krishna gives it to Brahma, pure. And then Brahma gives it to Narada, pure. And Narada gives it to Vyas, and Vyas has a little bit he has to work on there. <laughs> because at one point he was a little concerned that he was not feeling satisfied. After completing all this putting together Vedic knowledge, he's known as the incarnation of uh, Vedic philosophy of the Lord, the incarnation of the Lord in terms of Vedic philosophy, literary incarnation of the Lord. So he was not satisfied when he completed all the work he had done compiling all this Vedic information. And his Guru Maharaj, who had received it purely from Krishna, Brahma, Narada, then Vyas. And then he explained to him that you did not directly point to the devotional service of the Lord. So then Srimad Bhagavatam comes in, very nicely explaining Krishna consciousness, the Lord, devotional service of the Lord. So everyone who receives this knowledge is supposed to take care of it. It, it, not, it doesn't become yours. You don't own it. I, I don't own it. Sometimes we become a little proud of the Vedic philosophy, almost like we own it. it it's, not, it's like it's coming out of our mouth, but it's supposed to be repeating what we've heard from the previous authority and not adulterating it, not changing it to suit the current situation in the world. Like Sri Paul was pointing to all these Bhagavad Gita's. When he was on the planet, he would say there was like 700, or it was said there were 700 or so Translations of Bhagavad Gita. I was distributing books years ago at the Atlanta airport and I met a man. He showed me his Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita as it was. I said, what the heck is it? I'm sure it was right on the cover, Bhagavad Gita as it was. I said, this is interesting. So Sri Baba gave Bhagavad Gita as it is. Maharishi Maharaj Yogi had Bhagavad Gita as you like it. Yeah, Maharishi, that my original first guru was Maharishi, and he had six chapters of Bhagavad Gita. Not the full Bhagavad Gita as you like it. Bhagavad Gita as you like it. <laughs> he was smart enough not to go beyond the sixth chapter. Because when you go into the later chapters, especially the twelfth chapter, yeah. it becomes very clear it's Krishna. And then later on even more. So he didn't touch it. <laughs> In fact, Maharishi had one disciple who was his personal secretary. And Maharishi did some meditation or something and he came out of his meditation. And this devotee he became Prabhupada's disciple. He asked him, can you give me more knowledge? And Maharishi told him, if you want more knowledge, you have to go to Bhakti Gita Swami. It's a true story. The boy told his story. That what, that's what happened to him. So that line of disciplic succession, in fact, Sri Prabhupada mentioned about Maharishi because there's no line of disciplic succession. Only him and his guru, as far as I know. Him, his guru, and then that's it. So you find in most of these institutions nowadays, don't find that discipline of succession going all the way back. I was going to sing a song for you, but it's not enough time. It's a song by Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. I know, I know Vishnu, I know it's part of the song. It's about the discipline of succession, the whole line coming down. Oh no, it's, too, it's a long, long song. Actually, I'll just read one verse so you get a flavor of it. It's a beautiful song. And uh, yeah. Sri Guru Parampara. Nice title, right? Sri Guru Parampara, that's what we're talking about. Sri Guru Parampara. By Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada. Krishna Hoite Chatu Mukha Hoi Krishna Seva Mukha Brahma Hoite Nara Deramati Nara Hoite Vyas Mara Gwa Kohe Vyas Das Purna Pragya Padmanabhavati. Translation. In the beginning of creation, four-headed Brahma received the science of devotional service from the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. Brahma taught this divine science to Devarshi Narada, and Narada imparted to Krishna Dwaipayan Vyas. 
Sripad Madhvacharya, who is also known as Purna Pragya Tirtha, calls himself a servant of Yas and is the guru and sole refuge of Padmanabha Tirtha. So it goes through all the different personalities, all the way to Prabhupada. It's amazing. So it's just like um, if you want, I've heard this example many times, if you want to take a beautiful, nice piece of fruit, like a mango, on the top of a tree, there's an expedient way to do it, right? What's that? Throw it down. Just throw it and hope that somebody catches it. <laughs> but for the most part, it's going to hit the ground, get bruised or smashed, and just, you ruin it. The best way, the most effective way, is to have a chain of contact. Reciprocal succession. The one at the top carefully hands it to the next person intact. Yeah. Now it wouldn't make sense for him to take it and squeeze it, bruise it, and expect when it gets down to the ground it'll be the same one that he picked up. He should be respectful. Here's a nice fruit. Take it. I wanted to come down to you in a nice way. You give it to the next person, next person, next person. Then finally when it comes to the ground it's the same exact fruit that was at the top of the but, as it says in this verse, when the succession was broken, the, the, the system is parampara, disciplic succession, handing, handing it down carefully. You don't own it. It's not yours. You've been entrusted with it. So now you take it and give it to the next person. Why should you change it? Put your interpretation as if, you know, we have the great intelligence. I was listening to a lecture by Sri Prabhupada this morning, and he's describing the, the defects that we are plagued with. We have, what are the four defects? Imperfect senses, cheating propensity, make mistakes. What's the other one? Becoming mm -hmm. huh? Become Committing mistake. Mm -hmm. Illusion. Illusion. Yeah. Get out. But then you got to pack up all your stuff and move to another place. Ten years later, get out. And throughout your life, the body comes, get out. Dehi no sminyata dehi, kaumara, yogara, jara. You're being forced to move. Yet you think, or I think, or we think, we're the controllers. But when you hear this transcendental knowledge presented properly, untouched, then you begin to realize who you really are. If you don't realize that you're spiritual and separate from the body, everything else will be wrong. One plus one is five. His eyes are like, what? Is that right or wrong? One wrong. plus one is five. Wrong. Wrong. Now, if I go five plus seven, I just did one plus one is five, that's wrong. Everything after that is wrong. I am this body, according to Vedic philosophy, is wrong. Now I start saying I'm a black man, I'm a white man, I'm a woman, I'm this, I'm that, I'm Gujarati, I'm Bengali, on and on and on, piling misunderstanding on top of misunderstanding on top of misunderstanding. And Krishna already said, you're not the body. So we want to learn Bhagavad Gita with the help of a devotee and not be confused to think, okay, I know it. So then it goes on. There it says that one should read Bhagavad Gita very scrutinizingly. Don't rush it. You don't need to rush. There's some, there's some concepts in the Bhagavad Gita, like the one we're talking about today, Parampara, that are extremely... Not complicated, but it is not easy to understand. Because everybody wants to be independent. And, and the Prampara is telling you, don't be independent. Learn the science. That's how it was presented in the chain of disciplic succession. Don't jump off and start, you know, speculating. So then Prabhupada goes on, he says that, scrutinize me with the help of a person who is a devotee of Sri Krishna. So this question comes up. How do you know if someone is a devotee? How do you, how can you tell if someone is a devotee? Who can say? You have to speak really loud. I heard. Always speaking of Krishna. That's a nice devotee. Always speaking of Krishna. Like Rupa Goswami, the great Acharya, in our line of this epic succession, <laughs> he says the most important instruction is always remember Krishna, never forget. Because if you do that, you're guaranteed to get purified over time. Always, what does that mean? All day, all night. Te sam satavitanam, priti, with that love and devotion. 
remembering Krishna, serving Krishna. And then he says, Satatam Kirtiyan Tomam, always Satatam, always constantly engaged in glorifying the Lord. So that is it's not as easy as something, it sounds, sounds really easy. I was just thinking of Krishna. Yeah, right. You gotta go to work tomorrow. You gotta go to school. You gotta hang out with your friends. You gotta do this, all these different distractions. Arjuna had the greatest number of distractions that anybody can imagine. I've heard several figures about how many people died on the battlefield of Kukshetra, but Srila Prabhupada generally says 64 crores. And I always forget how much is a crore. Those of you from India, what is a crore? How much is that? 100,000? 12 zeros. No, 10, 10, 10 million. 10 million. Yeah, so, Prabhupada, so it says 640 million people died. That's why Arjuna said, I don't want to do this. He could see, like they say in the secular world, begin with the end in mind. He could see the end game. 640 million, a lot of my family members and friends and schoolmates and the teacher, Dronacharya, not that Dronacharya, the other Dronacharya, <laughs> Dronacharya, Bhishma, they all have to die. Krishna, why are you asking me to do this? Why are you asking me to engage in this ghastly warfare when you know what's better than me? It's not right. But it was his duty. And above and beyond that, of course at that time he didn't realize it, but the Supreme Lord is telling him to do it. <laughs> it was like some of us, I mean, I didn't have to go to the military, but they had to draft back in the old days. So you didn't want to go, but they drafted you, you had to go. I could send a lot of people to Vietnam. My brother was in Vietnam. And they were killing people <coughs> that they didn't know. And a lot of them felt bad at the end. I mean, it's not my war, why am I killing these people? But it was the government. And they had to do it, correct? They had to do it. So Arjun, God is telling you Arjun, but he doesn't know that his friend, his cousin, his brother-in-law practically, is God. He doesn't know that yet. So it stands the reason why he had those logical, reasonable arguments. If we kill these people, even if I win, those whom I would like to share my success with will all be dead. What's the point? It's like in our life, like we, we get a nice house, we get a nice car, we get nice clothes, so our friends will all say, that's nice. You have a nice this and that. That's why we work so hard, so we can have some nice things. Actually, I was sharing this with the devotee yesterday. Prabhupada said in a quote that came out yesterday, you dress for your friends and you eat for yourself. <laughs> you have to think about it. You dress nicely for your friends, but you eat for yourself. So we do everything, more or less for ourselves, and how others are going to respond. So Arjuna is thinking, I don't want to do this. But he's saying no to the Supreme Personality of God, and then he says, Si shasti ham sadimam prapanam, I am your disciple, soul surrender. And then two verses later he sits down, sits on his chair, I'm not going to fight. Hmm. Wait a minute, you just said you're going to be my disciple, that means do you understand disciple, what it means, surrender? Obviously he didn't right then, because he told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight. It's like, go to your guru, he says, Guru Maharaj, I'm surrendered. He said, okay, I want you to go and do this. No, but I'm not doing it. That was the dilemma. But gradually, if you go through Bhagavad Gita, you see Krishna patiently explains to Arjuna so nicely, and finally he surrenders 100%. And at the end, we were just reading that today in our Atlanta Bhagavad Gita study. And we were looking at the last few verses of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, it says, uh, yes, I think it's text 73 or 72. Yeah, it's a very nice verse. I can get to it. So Arjuna says something. Yes, Krishna says in verse 72 of the 18th chapter. I'll skip the Sanskrit for now. O son of Prita, O conqueror of wealth. Have you heard this with an attentive mind? Just like Nitravinda was saying, attentive, focus, with an attentive mind. And are your ignorance and illusion now dispelled? Hmm. And then Arjuna says, Oh my dear, my dear Krishna, or infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy, and I am now firm and free from doubt. 
and am prepared to act according to your instructions. So in another verse in Purpose Prophet describes that Krishna patiently instructed Arjuna. But he was prepared, Krishna was prepared to answer any question that Arjuna had because the spiritual master should be able to answer the inquiries of the disciple. That verse is coming up a little bit later in this chapter, uh, fourth chapter. So one can make inquiries with service to the spiritual master, and the spiritual master should be able to answer those questions. So Arjuna, Krishna was, Prabhupada said that Krishna was ready to answer his questions. If he did not, he was ready to go back and do the whole Bhagavad Gita again, if he didn't understand. That's how patient the spiritual master is with the disciple, taking into account that they still have connections or still have attachments, patiently explaining nicely. So therefore, as Prabhupada says in that first purport, with the help of a person who is a devotee of Krishna, then, and try to understand it without personally motivated interpretation. That is really hard. It really is. I mean, I guess I have to be honest with you all. <laughs> when I began reading the books, I kept looking for something in there that would say, it's okay to still get high. <laughs> I mean, I was looking. I knew it was in there somewhere. It's okay to still eat me. I just kept looking. Because no, you know, I didn't have a devotee in my house guiding me. I'm just reading the book. You know, a lot of people have Bhagavad Gita at home, mm -hmm. and they don't have a devotee of Krishna to guide them. So they come up with all kinds of questions and ideas. So here I am, little Benny Tillman in Atlanta, Georgia, trying to find some excuse to enjoy sense gratification in the Bhagavad Gita. Guess what? I didn't find it. It's been 48 years. I still haven't found it. What was that song by the band called U2? I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I was looking for it, and it was just not there. You will not find it. You won't find any justification for sense gratification. You will find a clear explanation of Chatur Varnya Manasri Sanguna, you know, the different divisions of life, the Hasta Varna Prasta Singhas, all of that. And within each one, there's a certain amount of, of uh, facility. Like, say, a Grihasta, a married person. They have a license for certain activities in life. Let's be honest, like, sex life is within the Grihasta ashram, it's not in the Brahmacharya ashram, Sanyasa ashram. So there are all these things in there. But I was looking for more. <laughs> I really wanted to hang on to my sense gratification. And you know what? I was still uh, you know, into the rock and roll scene. I was a musician. I was still you know, doing the thing that musicians do. And I was reading in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and Shiva Prabhupada explained in the purport. And he said that those who try to imitate Lord Shiva by smoking ganja, ganja means marijuana, are calling death near. And that very same day, I stopped. No more intoxication. Because I don't want to die because of this nonsense. So that Srila Prabhupada giving it purely in his books, in his purports, and hopefully those who are explaining these things to us take the time to explain it carefully. And you take the time to read it carefully. It's been, it's like that mango. I started the discussion about the mango. This is like Pure mango coming down. But you still need guidance. If you think you can do it on your own, fine, go for it. But I've been doing this for like 48 years, Bishop Vidal, for like 50 years, probably with many other devotees. We still, like, he and I talk all the time, you don't know that. Bishop Vidal will call me, I'll call them. We, we check our ideas with each other. That's important. I've said it a hundred times, you need to have at least a few devotees that you trust who are sincerely practicing that you can consult with. When you get some beautiful, fancy Krishna conscious idea, check it out first, okay? Don't just go running with it. We all get many good ideas, right? Yeah, all kinds of ideas. Or we, th we read something, we think it meant this, but we don't have the you know, extensive uh, application of the knowledge to know what it really means. I remember I used to call it's only this type of talking about sometimes in India when I was confused about something. And I would call him in India and he would guide me through it. Now I just call Bill Krishna in North Carolina or Sri Dhananda in California or Vishnu Gadai here in Philadelphia. Because I want to make sure that I'm understanding it because your understanding is, is based on your 
practice of devotional service with love and devotion. I quoted that verse earlier. Te sam satadhitanam, bhavitam pradhitvavadam, dadami budiyogantam, enamam budiyogantam. So the Lord is reciprocating with you based on your devotional service. You want to understand the Bhagavad Gita? Service. You don't do service, it'll take you longer. It's a fact. It will take some time. <coughs> Actually, there was one verse. I had it written down on a piece of paper, so I didn't want to forget the number. It might be in the last part of the Bible. What did I do with that paper? Somewhere. Oh, boy. It's gone. Yep, today I've got no, I haven't. Christian just reminded me where it is. It's just the number of the verse. 1875. And it's the second paragraph. 1875. So, Prabhupada says, Narada is the direct disciple of Krishna and the spiritual master of Vyas. Therefore, Vyas is a bona fide, is as bona fide as Arjuna, because he comes in the disciplic succession, which is what we're talking about. And Sanjaya is the direct disciple of Vyas. Therefore, by the grace of Vyas, Sanjaya Sanjaya's senses were purified, and he could see and hear Krishna directly. One who directly hears Krishna can understand this confidential knowledge. If one does not come to the disciplic succession, he cannot hear Krishna. Did you hear that? If you don't come to the disciplic succession, he cannot hear Krishna. Therefore, his knowledge is always imperfect, at least as far as understanding Bhagavad Gita is concerned. So I'll stop because I know it's time. But anyway, the most, you know, understanding how important the disciplic succession, the knowledge coming untouched. That's why Prabhupada says, Shukla Prabhupada says, Bhagavad Gita as it is. So as you're presenting Bhagavad Gita, try to understand it with the help of those who are experienced in reading Bhagavad Gita and, practice, and practicing the principles of Bhagavad Gita. That they're devotees of Krishna because Krishna spoke to Bhagavad Gita, even though most of these people don't agree with that. Most of the people who translate Bhagavad Gita don't see it that way. And Prabhupada even pointed to Gandhi. I know in India, Gandhi is highly revered. But Srila Prabhupada even pointed to that. Gandhi did not think that there was such a person as Krishna. Prabhupada said it like that. He didn't really see it like that. But he loved the Bhagavad Gita very much. So we want to make sure that we're understanding it clearly. Jnana, the jnana, the knowledge and the practical application of the knowledge is extremely important. But as you try to apply Bhagavad Gita in your life, it is imperative that you have someone help guide you through that process. That's the message. Always seek the guidance of the more experienced person. We have the whole discipline succession. But you know, right now, we're here in ISKCON, and we're trying to preserve a certain kind of discipline succession concept of the how Prabhupada wanted things to go. That's just as important as the whole history of the Vaishnava history. What did Prabhupada want this movement to look like? He gave some ideas in the seven purposes and all that. So we have a big responsibility to preserve this Guru Param process system, but also to preserve the history of this movement. And don't change it too much. We can change our own personal lives and do what we have to do at home, but in terms of the movement, we should all strive to see how close are we to what Prabhupada really wanted in his seven verse. Very, very important. So I'll stop. Is there time for a question? Any questions or comments, corrections? Yes, Mr. Bender. I made some notes. I want to thank you for again, like, breaking this apart into like the pieces for a lot easier definition, just like a child in the same So um, this aspect is all adulterated. I'm having a little difficult time with it because Sorry. I know I. Freshly squeezed orange juice. Yeah, right? it's over <laughs> apple juice. You know, you throw apple in there, you squeeze it, you, there's so much left behind. Yes. If you look at it that way. And so I, what you're saying makes me appreciate this 
effort has been proper. Great effort to, to fill us in. Not Very fun, with yes. Partial bits. And then the aspect about um, Father Vegeta not bent for the Mahihash. Because they take it and make it their own or about themselves and twist it. Yes. So that in regards to atheistic um, yes, the mentality, is, is atheism considered demonic? Well, when you refer to demonic, you said demonic here. The demonic interpreters, people who write books on Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. The general mass of people are not necessarily classified as demoniac, or they have demoniac natures and all that. But we don't see everyone as a demon. You have to be careful of that. So we, they're mostly innocent. General mass of people are innocent. So then we present Bhagavad Gita as we do by the millions all over 